I'd like to call to order the Plan and Zone Commission uh, public hearing for today, May 29th. Um, tonight, I'd like to announce we have a new commissioner, Reagan Johnson. Uh, this is her first meeting. Uh, Reagan, would you like to say a word or two where you came from? And uh, sure. Uh, oh, your mic. Is that right? Am I on? You're All on. Right, I'm learning. Um, my name is Reagan Johnson. I've been a Quad City and a resident of Davenport for 15 years now. Um, what else do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> totally up to you. <laughs> I have a 14 year old daughter who will be attending Central High School next year, which I'm extremely nervous about. Um, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Be good. But, and I'm really excited to be here and be a part of the group. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. I'm Dave Tallman. I've been here. Oh, never mind. Uh, <coughs> Connell. Present. Hepner. Here. Ingram. Present. Johnson. Here. Kelling. Here. Lammers. Present. Manus and Matter excused. Quinn. Here. Reinhardt's. Here. Tallman here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Tallman. I'd like to ask everybody in the audience to please turn off your cell phones. Uh, it does bleed into our audio, so I'd appreciate your cooperation. We'll start off with our one and only case ORD 18-02, the ordinance amending Title 17 to incorporate a zoning component to promote and create a commercial identity for the Rockingham Road corridor through the use of design and use standards through early adoption of the new zoning code. City of Damport is the petitioner. Chapter 17.60, the Damport Municipal Code allows for text and map amendments. Uh, staff, Matt? Um, Sarah Ott, the assistant to the city administrator, is going to make the presentation. Thank you, Matt. Sarah, nice to have you. Thank you. Um, so I am going to go over briefly a presentation um, prior to hearing any comments today. So um, we are talking about the Rockingham Road Corridor. I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on what got us to this point here. Um, a few weeks ago, council directed staff to start a rezoning process for the Rockingham Road corridor um, because we are far enough along in our zoning ordinance um, uh, revamp. They decided to accelerate the adoption of the new zoning ordinance for this particular area. Um, at that same time, Alderman Dunn and Alderman McGinnis also appointed a stakeholder group of which we have been working with um, to ensure public participation in this process. We have had two stakeholder meetings with that group as well as a neighborhood meeting that was held a few Saturdays ago. So a little bit of background on the new zoning ordinance. This is about an 18 month process and it's anticipated to be complete later this fall um, and to be officially adopted for the entire city. Um, our planning and zoning, uh, our, our, uh, our zoning staff, I should say, has been working with Camiros, who is the consultant that has been hired um, to do that. And like I said, this covers the entire city. The portion that I am talking about tonight is only for the Rockingham Road corridor. So we're only um, asking to adopt a portion of this, um, this overall zoning area. Um, so we're talking about the area from Marquette to on the east all the way to John Fell Drive on the west. Um, originally, we had kind of tighter, shorter boundaries along Rockingham Road, but as we were working with the stakeholder group, they identified that um, it would be more advantageous to stretch out the boundaries um, from Marquette to John Fell Drive to create a cohesive zoning um, map for the entire corridor. So we're addressing two different issues um, in this updated code. Um, you know, we always like to say that zoning is just a tool to implement plans. Zoning is not a magical cure-all, but it is one part of the, is one piece of the pie um, as we're looking at how we can um, redevelop the entirety of the Rockingham Corridor. So we're using it as a tool to implement plans that have been done in the past. There has been the, um, the, 
older commercial corridor study, the West End focus plan, and to a lesser extent, even the comprehensive plan. This is just a tool to help implement those plans. Um, where possible, the neighbors in the stakeholder group do desire a less intensive use along, um, along the Rockingham corridor. So we're achieving that with a combination of use restrictions and design standards. So to talk a little bit about the use restrictions, under the new zoning ordinance, there'll be two changes that take place along the Rockingham Corridor. And kind of how I've explained this um, to the stakeholder group and to the neighborhood group um, when we met is that the first thing that will be done is that we're rezoning certain properties for different classifications. So there are certain properties, and I'll pull up a map here in a second that you'll see, there are certain properties where their classifications are changing. They may be changing from industrial to commercial, um, things like that. But within those categories, there are also um, allowed uses in those classifications that are changing from the old code to the new code. So for example, um, a gas station moves from allowable in C1 in the old code to I1 in the new code. So this is a map of the current zoning along Rockingham. Um, you can see that pretty much south of Rockingham Road, that entire stretch is currently um, an industrial classification. And it bleeds right on down. So you have Marquette right here. This, this map is kind of cut in half. You have Marquette right here following to the west and then coming down again right here to John Fell Drive. Um, under the proposed uh, rezoning. We're taking a lot, well I shouldn't say a lot, we are taking some properties that were currently, so this entire stretch was industrial, and we are moving some of that to a lesser intensive use, so to a C2 um, zoning classification. You can see that we've moved here. We tried to limit um, non-conforming uses, so where there is heavy industrial already, that remains industrially zoned. We don't want to create um, a whole flurry of non-conforming uses. Um, however, where possible, we do believe that um, this should have a more neighborhood feel to it. So we are trying to lessen the intensity of the zoning along, um, along this stretch um, by rezoning from industrial to commercial on certain properties. So this is a matrix that um, our staff put together. This is not wholly inclusive of all the changes, but is something that was passed out to stakeholders and at the neighborhood meeting um, to discuss kind of some of the changes that are taking place within the classifications. So on the left, you will see what is included, some of the things that are included in our existing um, classifications along with on the right what is included in the proposed classification so that you can see um, there are things that change so um, for instance like I pointed out a gas station moves from C1 in the old code to I1 in the new code There are some design standard changes that also occur um, with this code change, um, namely that um, we're trying to enhance the aesthetics of the area. So this is just um, a short list. This is not all inclusive, but just some examples of things that will be adopted um, in the proposed code. Things like large blank walls need to have architectural detail. Roofs have required materials and focal features if they are over 100 linear feet. Where it, um, there need to be identifiable public entrances. Um, again, we're trying to enhance the aesthetics of the area. So moving forward, um, we are, the neighborhood meeting was held on May 19th. Um, we are here today on May 29th. Um, and then you guys will have a vote at your next scheduled meeting. And then um, the public hearing at the City Council Committee of the Whole is scheduled for June 20th. Um, there will then be three readings of the ordinance, which it will hopefully be concluded by July 25th. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions for staff at this point? Seeing none, would Scott, do you have a question? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's fine. It's all good. Um, Sarah, uh, uh, these new classifications or designations, uh, they, these are corridor-specific uh, or, uh, for instance, uh, what is what is now called uh, R4C. Um, 
will that be pre maintained only for the Rockingham corridor or will that be in place throughout the city or on other corridor designations? So the new classifications that we are um, proposing will actually come into play for the entire city when the full zoning ordinance is adopted later this fall. So those new classifications will be part of the new zoning ordinance so that they are not specific just to the Rockingham corridor. Um, they will be applicable to the entire city once the new zoning ordinance is adopted. Okay. so. What is now being called an R4C was formerly an R4D or M or something like that, and that will be eliminated at the end of the year? Certain classifications will be eliminated. I'm going to let Matt speak to that. I can give a, a brief explanation. Uh, the R4C, there's also a companion R3C, are intended to be, uh, I'll say, central city uh, residential zoning uh, classifications that uh, employ some of the, if you recall, the residential infill design overlay districts. So they're going to be a little bit more geared towards uh, maintaining uh, character in some of the older neighborhoods. Um, so that's just one specific with respect to those two districts. There will still be an R3 and R4, um, but without getting into a, a big discussion about future zoning classifications. Does that answer your question? I, I think so. But what if someday uh, we or the city decides uh, an overlay district is appropriate for West Locust Street, west of whatever, Marquette, Pickett Street. Uh, do these standards that we are adopting or talking about today be become universal for the next request like this? So the request before you today is only for, at this time, only for the Rockingham Corridor. But those classifications will be uh, will be brought to, before you guys later on this fall as part of the overall city adoption of the new zoning ordinance. So um, I, I guess I don't fully understand your question about the overlay, but these classifications um, will come into play later this fall when the entire zoning ordinance is brought before you. All right, I, I, I think you've answered it. Okay. If I could ask another question. Um, in regard to building materials, um, the draft report talks about certain types of building materials being able to be used within the corridor. Uh, my question is this, is it only for properties that front the corridor or, does, or is there a depth factor off of the corridor uh, that what these building material requirements would be um, set in place? Yep. So um, again, the the properties that are outlined in the in the packet that you received are the ones to which um, those design standards will apply to at this time. But those design standards are also written into the new code. So once the new code is adopted, that will be for um, all properties within those certain classifications, not just for the properties along Rockingham. Okay. So between now and the time that the new uh, zoning um, ordinance goes into effect. If somebody owned a home along Rockingham, I'm just trying to understand mm -hmm. all yep. this, owned a home along Rockingham Road, uh, or owned a lot, a vacant lot along the Rockingham Corridor, and they wanted to build a brick house, and there were no other brick homes in the, in the vicinity. Would they be permitted to do a brick home, or would they have to have some other type of exterior material because there was nothing in the surrounding area like it? Matt, do you want to speak to that? Sure. Um, I think the, the intent of what's now the residential infill design overlay and the future uh, C districts uh, doesn't go to the level of uh, building materials. now. You know, we're always looking for materials that are permanent, you know, have, you know, permanence and quality. But the main um, idea behind the uh, design standards for residential is to ensure proper form, massing, and, and building orientation over materials.
Okay, thank you. One, one final question uh, in regard to building material. Uh, on page four, uh, 404 in our draft here, uh, paragraph two, subparagraph A, it talks about new construction uh, and material that is possibly used. Is there not a contradiction in what's stated there? Because it says uh, for, for new construction, if one primary building material is used, a minimum of two but no more than three accent materials are permitted for the overall structure, including any addition, and then it rules out um, uh, anything other than the primary material. I mean, is there, is there a contradiction there in that, in that statement? I think Matt's looking at that right now. Actually, I, I, mis I misquoted. It was page four, of four, um, four dash five, subparagraph four. Could we provide a uh, an answer at the next meeting? I think the idea was that uh, you want to encourage a variety of, of materials. There may be some materials that are, I'll say, less desirable as a primary material, but may be okay in limited for, uh, form as an accent, but. Uh, we could get back with you on that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Commissioner Quinn. Oh, thank you. Um, did I read correctly in my packet that if these design standards are ultimately adopted, it would only apply to like building additions, major facade renovations, and I believe like major repairs. This wouldn't like force a property owner to go out and spend a bunch of money to, to conform to the yep. new standards with it. That's correct. Thank you. Commissioner Lambert, did you still? My question. Okay, thank you. thank you. Any additional questions at this time? Seeing none, thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Would anybody from the audience like to come up and speak in favor of this petition? Seeing none, would anybody like to come up and speak in opposition? Also seeing none. Commissioners? Come on up, identify yourself. I apologize for not seeing you. I joined in for a while, maybe. <laughs> uh, my name's Donna Porter, and my husband owns Rich Metals. When you had your map up there, I had a couple of questions because I spoke to Mr. Copes, Cops today. Okay. Scott? Scott. And when I was speaking with him, he Ms. said, Sarah, I... Sarah, could you put whatever map she's referring to back up, please? The current or the proposed map? The proposed one. Um, when I was speaking to him today, because I was a bit confused, and goodness knows there's a lot of gossip down in the hood at what's supposed to be going on. So <clears throat> when I spoke to him, he said, I am I, too. And we own a portion of, uh, we own the 2255 Rockingham. On, on that built, on that piece of property, it's almost one in, it's 1.67 acres. We have a steel warehouse building that accommodates, that works with our scrapyard. We also have a commercial building that the Rena Center rents. So, but if I'm looking according to this map, you have me in a uh, light purple, which is now looks like it's indicated to be light industrial. So that would basically be changing my zoning. And we've owned the one, the 510 Schmidt Road since 1964. We've owned 2255 Rockingham since 2004. So I'm getting a bit confused if you're changing my zoning that's inhibiting me to rent it out to make money to pay your taxes. Scott, would you like to address that, please? Yeah, the map that's on the screen right now, I was asked to put a shading on there mm -hmm. so that only the areas being rezoned at this time show up in the dark colors but the whole property is being rezoned to i2 even though it looks like it's a lighter shade of purple okay it's just a shading that we put over there so the whole property is being rezoned to i2 
and I, you know, I, I called you back and I did yeah. verify that uh, retail is allowed in I-2. Okay, because th that's where my issue was, is if my warehouse is going to be different than that portion of the property, because I have two different things on one piece of property. So that was my issue, is if it's going to change, and your map kind of threw me there, that it looks like you're not going to let me do what I do on that property that we've been doing for 14 years. And at that point, it's a bit unfair to people that bought the property for a specific reason, and then you change it. So as for landowners, that's, that's a bit unfair. It sounds so, like that's yeah, not the it, case. It is. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Make sure you understood. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Sarah, would you like to come forward? I'm glad we got that specific property taken care of, but I wanted to speak to that issue in general because there are um, some properties that will that have uses currently that will become non-conforming uses um, if and when this is passed. They do not need to stop whatever that use is. If they currently have an acceptable use under their current um, classification, it will just become a non-conforming use. They can continue on with that use, even if their zoning changes, um, unless the property um, is vacant for 12 or more months, at which point they need to come into conformance with the new code. So. Um, I'm glad that we took care of the issue with um, your property, but I know there are other properties where that concern may come up. Um, but just know that no one has to stop what they're doing if they're being rezoned to a different classification at this time. They just are considered a non-conforming use at that time. Thank you. You must have been reading my mind. I was just going to explain that because I could yeah. see that that question was probably out yep. there. And, yep, and that it, came up at the neighborhood meeting. We addressed that with right. a couple other property owners as well. Right. Thank you. Commissioner Hefner. Sir, I had a question. If um, a business owner is operating their business under that, which you just spoke to, mm -hmm. uh, were to sell their business to another person, will that business still be able to uh, do business as yep. that? As long as there is not that 12 month break. Okay. So if it transfers um, you know, from me to you and you continue on seamlessly, you continue as a non-conforming use. Very well, thank you. The way it was explained to me was it stays with the property, not with the owner. So, Any additional concerns from the audience? Seeing none. Commissioners? Seeing none, we will close this public hearing. This will come back before us next Tuesday, a week from today, same place, same time, 5 o'clock, for a vote. And that would conclude our public hearing tonight. Do I have a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Move to adjourn has been approved, or I mean made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you for your attendance. <laughs>